Hello, and as you may have seen, uh, the content of this channel includes a lot of material, uh, video material that I have, uh, uh, you know, filmed in Svenska uh, Kyrkan churches, um, it's the Swedish church, um, you know, in Uppsala, Halmstad, and Karlstad, Hamaro, um, uh, in other places. Um, the material from Halmstad I publish in another social media platform, but uh, yeah, I am a fan of Svenska Kyrkan, okay? I love Svenska Kyrkan facilities, uh, you know, you know, in Stockholm, Uppsala, uh, you know, Karlstad, Hamaro, Halmstad, you know, I've been in, in, in Gothenburg, and, I mean, everywhere I've been, in Luleå, you know, whatever, in Malmo, uh, everywhere I've been in Sweden, I've always taken the time to go to the local Svenska Kyrkan setup, and, you know, I've never disappointed, Svenska Kyrkan is a great place because you know you can just drop out you, know, you can take a break from you know the, the utopia of uh, bread and freedom for five minutes and, and go inside and like just you know like break with the outside and just focus on like a spiritual uh, meditation and you can light a candle or whatever and, and usually you know in my experience when you show up impromptu during the day in a variable day of the week to Shirkan, the churches are empty right so you end up usually alone, sitting alone there or relatively alone in a big Svenska Shirkan setup and, you know, it's like a spiritually uplifting, you know, and what have you. And you can just sit there and meditate for a while and then, you know, go back. And then, then you are sort of like refreshed when you go back to the, you know, democratic utopia of the, uh, the Samhallet or whatever, the Swedish, uh, the Samhallet that is governed by the Swedish state. Um, uh, so Svenska Kyrkan is a great place to drop out for five minutes and be spiritual, you know, and whatever. Um, and I do it all the time. I light candles all over. I've, light, I've lit candles all over Sweden. <laughs> I've lit candles all over Sweden. I love to like, whenever I go into Svenska Kyrkan, if I can light, light a candle, I light a candle. You know, and I, I usually say a prayer or whatever. Not a prayer, but like I make a, like I, I say, I, in my head, I say why I'm lighting the candle. I'm into lighting candles, usually for like, causes that I'm into like whatever I made a video one time when I lit a candle in the in the tree of life in the Karlstad Cathedral because I was uh, you know it was a memorial to you know the victims of shunning and the victims of uh, the blood teaching in, in Jehovah's Witnesses I've done another one when I went to um, the cathedral in Uppsala I lit a candle and also in the Holy Trinity Church next door I lit candles where I you know it was about you know the Ukrainian refugees and uh, when I went to uh, St. Katarina in Stockholm, I also lit a candle for like one candle I lit because they have several altars where you can light candles. So in one, I lit a candle for the, you know, undocumented persons in Europe. In uh, another one, I lit a candle for uh, non-binary and transsexuals who are being persecuted around the world. So that's what I do. When I go to Svenska Kyrkan, when I light a candle, I don't just light a, I don't just say a prayer for me or like whatever, try to get something for me. Most of the time when I go to Svenska Kyrkan to light a candle, I light a candle for something else, you know, whatever, um, you know, an, uh, whatever thing that is, I think is more important than me. So uh, like, you know, the fate of the transsexuals in, I don't know, countries where transsexuality is, you know, not recognized. Um, or, you know, the fate of undocumented persons in Europe who are being persecuted um, and rounded up to be, you know, because of the detention directive or um, Ukrainian refugees who are escaping, you know, um, the war and, you know, Russian military targeting civilian infrastructure, uh, uh, whatever, you know, all these things. So I, when I go to Sveka Shek and I light a candle, and that is part of my uh, strategy for achieving change, believe it or not light a candle. Not that that is a strategy that's going to bring around immediate change, but it is a strategy that uh, sort of like adds a spiritual, um, uh, I don't know, context to whatever actual political work I might be doing. And I mean, I do political, real political work with like the, the radical left. I mean, I am involved in campaigns and I'm involved in, in, in online meetings and in organizing and, and, you know, putting up posters and stickers and, you know, I attend meetings, I, I leaflet, I've leafleted, you know. Uh, I mean, I do the concrete political work with the with the radical left when I can, but I sort of like go into Svenska Shirkan and like, I light candles too, right? So that is what you just heard is the sum total of my political activity because I am a non-violent. I believe in non-violent civil disobedience, non-violent civil disobedience. 
I believe this civil disobedience is necessary. It is part of democracy. And I take this, a well, very good example of that is Extinction Rebellion. Um, current example of civil disobedience in action is Extinction Rebellion. Um, you know, during the Occupy movement, they talked about mass civil disobedience. Um, you know, I believe that undocumented persons in Sweden are, in essence, engaged in an act of civil disobedience to preserve their lives, to prevent being deported to a torture chamber or war zone, or to a situation where maybe slave traders will take them over, like happens to many people who are deported to North Africa uh, when they're not from there. Like my fiance, uh, my fiance, the man I was going, I was going to marry, was deported to a North African country he was not from. Um, you know, uh, for example, and like me, there is many others. I mean, the, the Swedish Migration Board. I mean, when it comes to like rela relationships, the Swedish Migration Bo Board doesn't care. It's a, an agency that has a cold-blooded attitude towards people's relationships. Um, my relationship with my fiance was destroyed by the Swedish Migration Board, but like me, there back when it was action mode deportation in their Facebook page, they used to have a section where they had pictures of all the couples, all the couples that have been destroyed or were in the process of being destroyed by the Migration Board. Most of them were heterosexual couples, either a man, either a Swedish man married to an immigrant woman that was being deported or a, a Swedish woman that was married to an immigrant man who was being deported. Or, uh, you know, there were also instances where the Immigration Board has destroyed families, where the families have children. Uh, fathers have been deported while the wife and child stay behind. I mean, all sorts of horrible things the Immigration Board does. And it grants itself total impunity to destroy people's relationships this way. The Immigration Board doesn't respect human relationships. It is the same way as the Jehovah's Witnesses, because one of the complaints about Jehovah's Witnesses is that shunning breaks up families, and they're cor is correct. I mean, the policy of shunning, when a person is disfellowshipped from Jehovah's Witnesses, their family and friends are told to shun them, meaning that they are supposed to pretend the person is dead. And uh, the Swedish Migration Board has a very similar policy when it deports uh, people, regardless of the relationships they're in. Uh, like my fiancé, you know, they destroyed my re my relationship with him. Uh, and, 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 and unfortunately, uh, his, his deportation had terminal consequences. Okay, I am not going to divulge details because I would be a violation of his privacy, even if, you know, uh, the um, um, consequences of his deportation were terminal. Still, I believe that I still have to respect his privacy. So I'm not going to say details, but, you know, like myself, there are many others uh, in Sweden who have, who, who's, who's significant others have been deported by the Swedish Migration Board with total I mean, and the Migration Board doesn't care. To them, it's, 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 these people are a number because from the perspective of the Migration Board, a person about to be deported is cattle. It's no longer human, they're cattle. So, you know, they proceed in that, in that, in that, uh, in that, uh, from that mentality to like destroy people's relationships. Uh, the Swedish Migration Board does not care about the consequences of deportation at all that it might have on people. Because again, the Swedish Migration Board, once a person gets a negative or, or, or a ruling that they must be deported, that person ceases to be a human being and becomes cow. So, you know, that's, it's, it's a sort of, it's a Swedish state version of what uh, in the trial of Eichmann was called the banality of evil. Okay, the, the Swedish Migration Board is the personification of the banality of evil in the current uh, Swedish state setup, okay? And that is why I believe it is justified to, to engage in civil disobedience against them. And that means that the undocumented must do whatever they can to hide and, and evade, engage in evasion, resistance, and, 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 and survival in order to prevent being deported to a torture chamber, war zone, or situation where they will face a, a terminal life crisis. You know, so they're preserving their lives. And in order to preserve your life, it is okay to disobey the law and break the law. Well, not break the law in the sense of like stealing or murdering, but dis disobey laws that would say that you have to leave. Uh, yes, it is okay to disobey those laws if, if your life is threatened. Okay, because again, the Migration Board and the Grand Police are the banality of evil. They don't care. Uh, uh, so, anyhow, I went on a tangent. This was about Svenska Shirkan. Back to Svenska Shirkan. I am very grateful that Svenska Shirkan. Uh, at least in Karlstad, I don't know, I, I think in Stockholm too, but in Karlstad definitely, 
estas misionen, they, they provide services for the undocumented, uh, and, and Svenska Kyrkan funds that, and Svenska Kyrkan, you know, does not discriminate against undocumented persons, at least in the mission in Karsla. Okay, and that is a very good thing of Svenska Kyrkan that they sort of like provide services. During the pandemic, Svenska uh, undocumented persons could go to Svenska Mission to get their vaccine. And then a mission and personnel will take them to the vaccination center, legitimate them, and they will get their vaccine. You know, that, that is something. And the Svenska Shirkan, of course, in Karlstadt, is partially funds Estas Mission and this service and whatever. So I, I'm very grateful that Svenska Shirkan social services, the arm of Svenska Shirkan that handles social services, uh, is willing to fund an organization such as Estas Mission and that. Uh, provide services for the undocumented. And also in the, the undocumented in, in Karlstad, uh, there was a, a legal clinic thing. They had a, like a legal advice uh, relationship they, with this law firm or whatever, and the lawyers could like provide advice and help to um, people who were undocumented persons and whatever. I mean, so I'm very grateful that my, that Svenska Shirkan creates that context so that people can do those things. Uh, Estas Mission can, you know, sort of like uh, provide those services. So, yeah, and um, and I think that the whole thing about the, the vaccinations for the undocumented was also in Stockholm. Um, yeah, so, yeah, that was that was a really, really good thing that Svenska Shirkan did and Estas Misionen, you know. I mean, not Estas Misionen was the one doing it, but Svenska Shirkan in Karlsson funds Estas Misionen, so, you know what I mean? Partly, or whatever, so. And I mean, I remember I've been to transmission in in Karlstad many times, and there were priests on Swiss Kashyyyk and volunteering and stuff in there. So it's very really good. You know? It's a it's a very good thing, you know. Um, so I'm very grateful for that, and uh, you know. But I am a fan of Swiss Kashyyyk. I am a fan of. I love Swiss Kashyyyk. It's like a thing. I don't know. It's like I. I don't. I mean, I don't share the theology of Swiss Kashyyyk. Okay, I am obviously committed to the theology of Christian restorationism. Currently, I, I am oriented towards Mormonism, but I am, you know, I am also, I keep an eye on, I mean, I follow the Mormon church, the mainline Mormon, Mormon church, and, but I keep an eye on uh, the Central Ohio Bible students, which are, I believe, are the, are the legitimate followers of Charles Davis Russell, not Jehovah's Witnesses. And um, I am also, of course, a proponent, open proponent of the Christology of Arius, and I am anti-Trinitarian. And of course, that my my theological positions put put me at odds with Svenska Kyrkan because, of course, Svenska Kyrkan's theology is a derivative, is a modernized derivative of Orthodox Lutheranism. And I mean, Luther, Martin Luther, was very very clear that he was a supporter of the Nicene Constitution Creed and its implications. So, as far as Luther was concerned, it was an incontrovertible fact that the Trinity exists, that God is a Trinity, and that Jesus is God. And you know that that's fine. And Martin Luther is entitled to his perspective. I disagree with Martin Luther. And I, you know, but whatever. And this Vinska Shirkan is a, has a Lutheran background. So, okay, I accept the Lutheranism or the post Lutheranism of Svenska Shirkan. It's cool. I don't have a problem with it. What I like about Svenska Shirkan is the, you know, the, 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 the atmosphere. When you go to Svenska Shirkan, you know, you can drop out, like, I, like I've said in other videos or before, uh, of bread and freedom or what have you. Uh -huh. uh, it's, it's great that Svenska Shirkan is there, you know. Svenska Shirkan is the heart of a heartless world, you know. The heart of a heartless world. In the, Karl Marx wrote about that in the, you know, when he, when he said, when he's writing about religion, he said, you know, that... Uh, you know, the church, not the church, you said religion, but I, I would say the church is the heart of a heartless world, and Svenska Shirkan definitely is the heart of a heartless world. Svenska Shirkan used to be part of the Swedish state, used to be an arm of the Swedish state. You know, a similar situation uh, when the, in the Roman Empire, um, the Roman state, the Catholic Church was the, the, the religious arm of the, of the Roman state. You know, the, uh, Svenska Shirkan was the religious arm of the Swedish state. The, for many centuries, and then in the year 2000, it was severed, and Svenska Kyrkan became independent of the Swedish state. It is no longer a part of the Swedish state, you know, and um, that is very uh, a very good thing because what happened is that when Svenska Kyrkan separated from the Swedish state, it ceased to be like the Swedish state. 
it it sees to be influenced by the narrative of, of Nordic identity and all these things, and and it and, and, and you know sort of like a crypto fascist uh, you know bureaucratic crypto fascism of the Swedish state, and it became sort of like a, a it, it sort of like it turned around, it turned around it its theology now is is it's about you know human rights and environment and and, and ecology and. And then you know they have their rainbow mass in in, in in Karlstad and in Gothenburg. I've been to the rainbow mass, where you know it's like as a LGBTQI plus you know mass for LGBTQI plus community. I mean I you know I they have the, the you know the, the, all the ecological and, and and when I went to Katarina Schirkan in in in, a, in a Stockholm they had an exhibit about all the species that have been extinct, and I made a video about it that it's gonna show in this channel. It's in the, in the is going to be published in this channel. So, yeah, I mean, Svenska Shirkan is like the op. Svenska Shirkan is the exact opposite of the Swedish state. You know, the Swe Svenska Shirkan is is like the antithesis of the Swedish state, where the Swedish state represents, you know, uh, crypto fascist bureaucratism and the banality of evil. Uh, Svenska Shirkan is the heart of a heartless world. You know, it's night and day night and day i mean it, think about this when i went to a, there was this church in, in stockholm i went to a mass there one time um that the church is a church in stockholm my, my you know and i um i walked in i was you know walking into the the building as the mass was going to start and um and the priest was at the door greeting people and he he said oh what is your name and i said uh, so and so and then he said welcome so and so you know um yeah, and he did that for each person, you know, like he took the time to learn the person's name and welcome them in their name to the to the to the uh, to the man. You know, that, that is like the exact opposite, <laughs> the exact opposite of the attitude of 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 the, the the Swedish state. You know, when it comes especially with immigrants, you know, because again, from the perspective of the Swedish state, if an immigrant doesn't have the if a, if an immigrant is refused, they become cattle. This is to be human, they become cattle. You know. Uh, or what have you, and, you know, in the Svenska Shirkan, all are welcome, regardless of who they are, to the to the communion, the Nakbar, you know, all are welcome to the mass, and, you, you know, whatever, you know, um, yeah, you know, it's uh, very, you know, you know, Svenska Shirkan is, and I, and I love the iconography, the iconography, I am, I am not, I don't worship icons, because in Restoration is Christianity, it's iconoclastic, okay, Restorationist Christianity is iconoclastic, and that's just the way it is. You know, you don't worship icons, and I don't. I don't believe in worshiping icons at all. Uh, you know, when I was a child, my mother used to keep... Uh, when I was a child, uh, well, I moved to the United States when I was 12. Uh, I lived there for 12 years, and, you know, when I was I, I was a teenager or whatever, my mother in our house, where we lived in, in South Florida, and um, we lived in Broward County, is is a tri county area, uh, uh, Dade, Broward, Palm Beach. We live in Broward, which is where Fort Lauderdale is located. But we live in a place called uh, Plantation, and in the, in the place where we live, there she had like a statue of Saint Jude, and she used to like light candles and feed it and put food and stuff. And she had like this cult of Saint Jude going on, and you know, and so I'm I'm not into like that stuff, you know, the the cult of saints and statues and pictures and stuff. I'm not into that. That, has, that that is, you know, when I left Catholicism at age nineteen, that is one thing that I got rid of. You know, however, I retained the sort of aesthetic affinity for iconography, and I love icons. I love icons, icons, and in Svenska Shirkan, the icons are beautiful. The iconography of Svenska Shirkan is beautiful. I mean, I've been to one exhibit of icons in Halmstad, in the Halmstad Cathedral, and it, I made a, a small video of it and I posted it on the social media platform. Uh, you know, I've made the iconography at a church in Gotsunda in Uppsala. Another one in the, the iconography that um, at the cathedral in Karlstad, and I made a you know the the, the they have the in the in the Holy Trinity Church in Uppsala they have these base reliefs, medieval base reliefs. You know, uh, and, and it's just amazing to watch that and uh, to see those. And um, and actually, there is another church in Hamaro. Hamaro Shirkan also has not as as not as big as the Holy Trinity Church in Uppsala, but smaller. They have a panel 
with uh, you know that they had uh, medieval base reliefs and things like that because Hamaroshirkan used to be the pil a, a point of start for the pilgrimage to Nidaros in the Middle Ages. So um, they have that church. The foundation goes back to the year 1200, and they have these base reliefs, this panel with base reliefs, and they also have a, 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 a a version of the Virgin Mary from that era, and I made a video about it. Um, yeah, I actually I've captured two versions of the Scandinavian Mary. That one at uh, Hamaro Shirkan in Hamaro, and the other one at, very recently at San Caterina's Shirkan here in Stockholm, where they have uh, a, a very beautiful Mary holding Jesus sitting down. And I, I commented that that must be the Scandinavian version of the Virgin of Guadalupe. You know, it was really interesting. So, yeah, but yeah, no, and I just want to say finally, you know, that, you know, in the same way, and I'm going to be like a mytho, myth, mytho theological here, okay, um, in the same way that, you know, God is spared Lot from the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah and Sodom, uh, in the same way that God spared Noah. Um, the flood. Um, I believe that when the moment comes that justice happens and that the, the Swedish state confronts its criminality and justice is done, I believe that the agent of justice that will, uh, you know, make the Swedish state pay for its crimes will spare Svenska Shirkan. Okay, when the moment comes that the Swedish state will be subjected to the faith of Sodom and Gomorrah, okay, because that is what, but that is what's going to happen to the Swedish state, because that is what's going to, that is what eventually happens to the venality of evil. Um, the Swedish state is going to end up in the same way as the Nazi state and the Southern Confederacy. Okay, and it's it's moment of uh, when you know it will confront the fate of Sodom and Gomorrah is going to come. Okay, I believe that when that happens, the agent of justice that unleashes uh, that upon the Swedish state will spare Svenska Shirkan. Okay, um, I believe so. So, yeah, I just wanted to say that, and I will end that there. Bye.